What I witnessed in Gaza wasn't a war, it was annihilation. Those are the words of an American doctor, Erfan Galaria, who recently returned from Gaza, having volunteered at one of its remaining working hospitals. On his return, he described the carnage inflicted by Israel's bombardment. He spoke of the sea of tents around Rafa, where 1.5 million Palestinians have been displaced. He spoke about how every few minutes his hospital would shake as airstrikes rained down nearby. The doctor described the medical equipment he had to use for amputations, a geely saw, essentially a piece of barbed wire, he said. He spoke about one occasion where parents carried a group of children into the emergency room. Their families had tried to run, return to their homes in Khan Yunis after Israeli tanks withdrew, but Israeli snipers remained. The children, all aged five to eight, had single sniper shots to the head, he said. Not one of them survived. Madam Deputy Speaker, for the last 137 days, Gaza has been subjected to indiscriminate assault. More than 29,000 Palestinians have been killed, including more than 10,000 children, with many more buried in the rubble. More than 70% of Gaza's homes have now been destroyed, and all 2.3 million inhabitants are now classified as facing either crisis, emergency, or catastrophic levels of food insecurity. Madam Deputy Speaker, as I've said in this chamber before, what is truly horrifying is that Israeli politicians and officials have said that they would unleash this atrocity on Gaza. At the start of the assault, an Israeli defence official said, and I quote, Gaza would be reduced to a city of tents. Remember the American doctor's description of Rafa. And an Israeli government minister said there are no non-combatants in Gaza. Remember the number of children killed. Another official said the aim was to make Gaza a place where no human being could exist. Now remember the number of people starving in Gaza. What Israeli officials said would happen has happened, and to its eternal shame, this government has given Israel the green light, refusing to call for an immediate ceasefire and continuing to arm the Israeli military, but that could take change today. Voting for an immediate ceasefire, and I mean an immediate ceasefire, will tell the world that Britain demands this war, this brutal assault must end and end now. In the face of the moral calamity we are witnessing, that is a bare minimum this House must do. So we must call for an immediate ceasefire, the release of hostages and all those unjustly imprisoned, and a lasting peace respecting the fundamental rights of all Palestinians and Israelis. So I say to my colleagues and those across the House with a conscience, history will remember this. I urge you, I implore you, vote for an immediate ceasefire today.